Hi, this is Luke Zip at Crocker Farm Auction, and I'm here with one of the most exciting new stoneware discoveries that we've ever been a part of. Uh, check it out, it's this uh, stoneware flower pot with incised bird and floral decoration. Uh, it's just unbelievable. It recently surfaced um, from a completely unknown source. Uh, nobody knew this piece existed before uh, we were contacted with it. And uh, we're just thrilled, first of all, to know that it exists. Uh, but second of all, to offer it in our July 16th Stoneware and Redware auction. Uh, it was made in Baltimore in the 1820s, uh, maybe about 1820 to 1825, and we can attribute it to the Morgan Pottery. Uh, during that period, they signed in Morgan and Amos, or Morgan Maker, it was owned by William Morgan, uh, right on uh, Pitt Street in Baltimore. Um, but it's just an example of just the pinnacle of fineness of stoneware production in America during that period and in Baltimore during that period. Um, as you can see, it's a flower pot, which is, first of all, an extremely unusual form for American stoneware. You would normally find redware flower pots, but this is stoneware. Uh, and there's only, from Baltimore during this period, I can only think of, um, the, the only pieces we know of, we, there's a shard, a, a very a small fragment of a base for a flower pot that was excavated, as well as there was uh, excavated a flower pot that was um, mostly complete but in pieces and then reassembled. But none have survived whole above ground. But it's really cool. It puts this piece into context. Those other examples were made by the Remy Pottery. Um, this was made at the Morgan Pottery. So it shows that this was something that during a brief period in Baltimore, just for special occasions, uh, were made for other individuals. Um, no saucers. I don't, there, no saucers have survived. This is, and I'll delicately take this out. There's a separate uh, wheel thrown saucer as well with cobalt highlighting all around it. Um, but really, the star of the show is the flower pot itself. And I'll just show how well conceived it is. So at the Morgan Pottery, William or Thomas Morgan were probably the ones who made this. There are, uh, I think, four known pieces with incised birds from the Morgan Pottery in existence. We sold a water cooler a few years back, signed Morgan Maker, with a very similar decoration made from this really fine clay. So there was an ad in 1820 from the pottery where uh, the Morgans uh, were bragging that they had access to two pits of clay that produced what they thought were, was possibly the finest stoneware ever made in America. And it, really, this piece bears witness to it. It's just this really creamy uh, clay when fired and you can see that the cobalt oxide when it's fired correctly with this clay it just pops off the piece but uh, William or Thomas Morgan or whoever the decorator was conceived just this really artistic decoration of incised birds with a with a flowering um, tree decoration you can see how fine and crisp the cobalt really stays very well within the lines. They use the negative space to highlight the eyes, which is uh, one of the hallmarks of Morgan birds versus Remy birds, which gets like, super technical. But uh, you can see the one bird is looking back, and I've seen a couple uh, Morgan birds like that. There's one in uh, the collection of Mesta that has two birds. Very similar, I believe one is looking back, just like that. And the leaves, the really large leaves with um, just really fine serrated borders. But it's really cool to see, because most stoneware that survives was made for a very technical, um, just utilitarian purpose, to store and consume foods and beverages, just real, you know, built tough. Um, but very rarely we get a glimpse into what these stoneware potters, um, the limits of their capability was, and what they really viewed as if I was going, if they were going to make a very special piece, what that would be. This is one such piece, and it was obviously made for a special purpose and for a special person. And um, it's just amazing that it survived in such excellent, remarkable condition um, to this present day. It's amazing that it survived unknown up until this present day. And we're just excited 
to have the opportunity to offer it in our uh, July 16th auction. I just want to show you also, I realize I didn't show the underside. It's so cool to see uh, the, the drain hole as well, like all flower pots should have. Uh, and maybe that is how it survived to this present day. Um, but yeah, we're just thrilled to offer it.